The designing, configuring and rolling out of new Android devices to end users needs some planning. You have to cater for their ability, skills and basically the patience of those end users. If you get it wrong, you might end up with a lot of tickets on your support desk and this can add cost to your project. So Android staging or the introduction of this new capability is a great improvement in my eyes. If you think of Windows pre-provisioning, this gives you the ability to take offline your devices, pre-build them with device policies before handing them over to end users. And if you're gonna set a session with your end user, you could also allow that session to take back their old devices in the same scenario. So catering for all those different types of end users can make a big difference. In this video, we're gonna look at Android staging, see how you configure it, and then take a look at a demo of enrolling a device. So let's get started. Right, okay, so where we're now into an admin center, we've got a few steps to follow and I'm gonna highlight a few things as we go along. The first thing we want to do is go into devices, Android, Android enrollment, and then we've got our standard enrollment profiles here. Now the first point to highlight is that this Android staging process is aligned and available through corporate owned fully managed user devices and corporate owned devices with work profile. Those are the only two currently that this is being released for. If I go into one of these, let's have a look at the uh, corporate owned devices work profile. I'm gonna create one, okay? So I'll give it a name. Let's give it something easy, Android pre-staging. I'll leave the description and then we're gonna pick the token type. And this is the difference, okay? This is where you see the change. We have now got this corporate owned with work profile via staging. It's this option which is gonna allow either your admins or your service provider to pre-stage um, and build the Android device before it gets sent or handed over to your end users. If I select that, I need to create an expiration date. Let's give it one for the end of the month and I'll hit the next and then create. So we see this actually created and there we have it. If I go into this, I will see a token and this is standard. If you remember previously, the enrollment profiles that you created for Android, you create a token. This is a standard way of enrolling a device into Intune. All right, so what this is gonna do is gonna break that enrollment and provisioning process down into two stages. You've got the service provider or admin person will receive the new device. They will scan this QR code, go through the enrollment without using any user identities. And then that will install the policies and the applications relevant to the device level. The next stage is the end user will open up the Intune app already installed on the device. The end user will log on with their credentials and anything left from an app or configuration perspective will be downloaded, installed and set up on the device. And that is at the user level. This is the way it currently works, right? So it's all it's doing is allowing you to break that process up and divorce it, which means it makes it easier and simpler for the end user to enroll. And that's the whole process of why this feature has been uh, brought out. So what we need to do is have a look at the applications. I just wanna show you something here. If I go into Android, um, let me filter these. Um, what do I want to see? I just want to see the assigned apps only. So I've got five applications here. And the way I'm going to go through this enrollment process, I'm going to assign, obviously, Microsoft 365 and also the Teams application. These notoriously can be quite heavy to install, take some time. So it may be in your scenario, you want to break these up. You don't want the end user to go through it and those apps will be downloaded at a device level. So let's just check that. If I go into the application itself, look at the properties, I've got um, it set to all devices. Now, one thing to be aware, if I do, let's have a look at edit this. If I do want to set a filter, and there is a reason why I might want to do that, I've got one here targeting Samsung devices with an enrollment device enrollment profile link of Android pre-staging, right? So 
The reason why you might want to use a filter is you don't want to use a, a device group where you've got a dynamic rule assigned to it. Using this process currently within this feature, if you do that and you assign a device to a dynamic group and then on the back of that group assign the applications, then those applications won't be deployed. And the reason for that is the device will not be assigned to that group during the staging process. So you have to have a way around that. And the way around that is either using filters or if you choose to, you can just go and, you know, with all devices, which is what I've done here. Let's go back and have a look at the applications again. Now I've also got this Microsoft Edge AI browser. In this scenario, I want to target it with the Android staging users. Now this is just a, literally a group of those people that I know that will be enrolling the Android devices. Um, I've got their names associated. So once they log into the company portal app, that will be picked up and obviously this application will be deployed down to the group. So it won't be deployed down to the device until that user has actually signed on or logged on with the, the company portal app. So there's our difference, okay? We've got a difference and WhatsApp will also be downloaded from the user perspective. We now have five apps. Two of them will be deployed during the build or the staging process and the rest will come down with the user logged on. So from a um, enrollment process per se, there's no real difference here, okay? You've got your enrollment promises you're generally probably used to. The process in which it's gonna follow is, is pretty much the same. The only difference being that you're not gonna be uh, logging on with user credentials at any point during that enrollment. But what it will do is it will go through the setup and actually surface up on the front page of of android okay which means it's minimal for the end user to then log on with the company portal now i have seen comments already from some people saying well you know what actually that doesn't help because how am i going to get my end users to enroll or provision finish that provisioning by going to the into the company portal app how will they know that well you know there's various ways around that you could make sure you're with someone's with them when they do it or you know run an end user session in the scenarios that i follow for my customers generally i book sessions with end users that maybe aren't tech savvy at the same time they can hand over say an old device and i can walk them through setting them up from the company portal. It's a lot quicker and a lot easier doing that than going through the whole enrollment process with them. So this is where it makes it that easier for that whole process. Okay, so let's jump in and have a look at how this works. So we start off by tapping the screen six times as you would do for QRs, codes, enter our region, get the scan for the QR, which you're gonna need sent from the admin user select our Wi-Fi personal to us, the uh, admin user, that might be a corporate Wi-Fi. Then it's gonna go ahead and start registering and downloading the policies. It shows us that it's an organization owned device and, and then skips on to setting it up. We've got some notification that the device policy is gonna be installed. It's gonna give us a couple of prompts for privacy and Google services, and then it's gonna go ahead and start registering the device. As it shows, we've got the Authenticator and Intune app, but also Teams and M365, as we showed during the configuration, that these, the, these are the apps that are gonna be set up during registration. So, as I said, we've got the Google services and the privacy notifications, uh, as you normally would get, as part of the enrollment and then it will do you know all the updates it needs before it launches onto the home screen of the device now if i swipe up you can see not all the application is installed yet so you're going to need to wait a few minutes for that to happen so if we wait a little while um, and try this again and obviously it's dependent on your wi-fi connection hopefully when you come to it the apps have now been deployed and as you can see there 
Teams and Office are now on the device itself. If I go in and have a look at the Intune app here that's automatically installed as registered, uh, oh, sorry, as required on this Android device, you should see that um, it doesn't automatically log me on, right? And the reason for that is obviously I've not used any user credentials as part of this staging process. So it's not likely, doesn't can't draw on anything in order to automatically sign me on. So at this point, what I can do is swipe down, turn the device off, and then literally hand it over to the end user that's going to be using the device. So before we move on to the next stage where we show the user enrollment, which will be very quick, right? I just want to show you your Intune portal. So we've gone into devices and Android, and we can see that this Android device is now in a staging process. How do I know that? Well, under device name, it tells me. So if you're trying to have a look at all your devices, Android devices in staging, they will be prefix by staging, the serial number of the device, then you're gonna get the, the enrollment type and then a date. So that's how you're gonna identify them. You're also gonna be able to see, you know, under the OS, whether they're fully managed, etc., cetera, um, and obviously whether they're compliant as well. So that's how you're gonna identify these. So let's go ahead and enroll this from the user perspective and see what happens. So now we've been through staging, let's complete the cycle here and actually enroll as the end user and just see how many steps it will take. Um, we go into the device, we start up the Intune application and sign in. Enter our user with our enter ID credentials, hit the next. Enter our password here and we may need to go through MFA if you've got that set up. So I need to enter a code. And then basically it's asking us to register the device. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's gonna sign us in. Um, we need to finish. You can, see, you can see it's picked up my tenant here, move to modern. Uh, we're registering the device using our user credentials and then we're done so we can actually go and hit hit the button and there we have it so what you will see is the applications that we assigned to the end user is now being downloaded you've got the edge company portal and now we've got the whatsapp if i go and click on edge let's see what experience we got we should expect some sort of automatic logon process here for our user so we'll just skip these introduction bits We don't want to customize the home page, but it's picked up and said, hi, Nesta Wilk. So it is using our credentials and we should log on to the browser using those. And there we have it. So from this point, what I would expect back on the Intune portal, if I just get rid of that, if I refresh the screen, it might not happen straight away, but let's see. Oh, it has so basically you can see the device name has now been updated okay so we've instead of the staging we've got our user we've got the enrollment type and we've got a timestamp again if i look at the other details it's telling me that the device is microsoft entra registered and the device is managed so that's android device staging i think this is a great new feature microsoft have introduced and possibly in line with white glove and pre-provisioning for windows i don't know you decide test it for yourself and maybe give me some feedback on your thoughts but for now thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon